So you saw a bright fireball in the sky and you determined by your previous videos that it's from a meteoroid and they likely produced meteorites that made it to the ground. But where? This episode is going to help you. Hello Earthlings, Fireball Steve here. In this episode of our How to Find Meteorites Crash Course, fireballs produce a tremendous optical illusion where it looks like they've landed very close to you. Let me caution you, almost everyone thinks the fireball they saw was much closer than it really was. Virtually everyone thinks this. Over 99% of the time, meteorites always burn out from 5 to 10 miles up in the air. Yes, once every 500 years, a huge asteroid will hit the ground on fire, but all the other ones, including the ones you saw, burned out miles up. And as such, they're almost always further away than you probably think. So where are they? The laws of physics will dictate where pieces of the meteoroid inside the fireball will land. Large pieces have more inertia and punch further towards the Earth through the atmosphere, while smaller pieces drop off sooner and will land earlier on the path during dark flight, the period of time after a meteorite slows down to the point where the friction ceases to burn the oxygen in the air around the meteoroid. The rock then takes an almost vertical drop at terminal velocity. At that rate, it will usually take four to six minutes for the rocks to hit the ground. As they are falling, wind can radically blow pieces way off course from where they started. Eyewitness reports and especially good video can help triangulate the starting and ending location of a fireball. The objective is to find out where meteorites could not be to narrow down the places where we know they probably are. At first, it is pretty much a theoretical guess until at least one meteorite is found. Doppler radar can sometimes help us. If you're on the scene of a recent fall before anyone has found a rock, the goal is to sample as much ground as possible. Some areas are far easier to search than others. A high school campus, for example, could have a field with high grass that is almost impossible for you to spot meteorites in, where a football field might be better groomed and where a baseball infield could be even better. And while you might laugh at that, I actually did find a meteorite on a baseball diamond. It was 2003, it was in Park Forest. Meteorites were all over the place uh, in the town of Crete. Uh, everyone was focusing on the big areas uh, where houses have been hit. Obviously, it's easy to find a meteorite when there's a hole in the roof of a house. But I was looking for the easiest place to cover and found myself on the high school property and right there in the baseball field was a little meteorite right on the pitcher's mound and stuck out red kind of uh, clay looking dirt and the black rock stuck out and you know it's opportunistic you want to look for opportunities whether it's a parking lot or um, the baseball field or a cemetery cemeteries are one of my favorite places as well something morbid about they seem to be there. Meteorites will usually have iron in them, and so a metal detector can often pick them up. But before you go buy a metal detector, if you're wanting to hunt today, that's probably not a good option. Metal detectors will take dozens, if not hundreds of hours to learn all the nuances of operation. And many places might look like they're a great place to metal detect, but both urban trash and farm trash can be hidden just under the ground and may make hunting with a metal detector almost impossible. Also, walking and swinging a metal detector is a skill that muscles are not able to sustain for very long, unless you're in great condition. For most fireball chases, a visual hunt is your best option. Some meteorites will punch a hole in the ground or some will dent it and bounce a few inches. Much depends both on the size of the rock and the composition and softness of the ground it hits. Small meteorites do not cause craters, only the much larger asteroids do. 
If the one you saw will be one of those crater causing events, it will be the news event of the century. In fact, the giant fireball that caused the Chelyabinsk, Russia event of 2013 broke thousands of windows and all that the main mass did was punch a fairly small hole in the ice of a lake. The Tunguska event of 1908 only knocked over some trees. Bottom line is don't waste time looking for big craters and burnt grass. What you're trying to spot are black rocks on top of the ground and possibly looking for small to medium sized holes punched into the ground with a black rock sitting in the hole. Hard surfaces, especially with colors contrasting with black, are ideal. Paved as well as gravel roads are awesome ways to scan huge swaths of square footage and sample a potential area that might be in the strewn field. Driving a car slowly can be a great way to hunt, as ATVs and golf carts can be. I've had tremendous success in the past riding bicycles in urban settings, but often nothing beats the results of walking. If you know for certain at least two meteorites have been found, the ground in between those fine spots is prime for more to be there. Search that area extra carefully. Invest more time first hunting the easier to scan areas and save more difficult areas for later. Make friends, obtain and share intel with others, especially those wearing our team colors. You can waste a lot of time repeating everything you've learned here with other people. But why when you can just send them here to watch these episodes on their own? If someone is sporting our colors, you know they know at least as much as you do. Legally, in the U.S., courts have generally upheld that whomever owns the property where a meteorite lands, they own the rock. If the federal government owns the land, often the Smithsonian will assert ownership of a rock you would find. Seldom do state or local governments claim ownership. Just as many cities will allow metal detecting on public property and if you find jewelry or money, they don't attempt to claim ownership over it. Often it's the same with meteorites. Now I'm not an attorney, so I don't want to give you legal advice. If there's any question, seek advice from an attorney in the jurisdiction of where you want to hunt. Private property presents some unique challenges. First, some states basically give property owners fairly free reign in shooting trespassers. No rock is worth getting shot or killed over. Being arrested for trespassing isn't the most exciting option either. The fines can be very high and being locked up in jail during the early part of a hunt could be quite expensive and lost opportunity fines. Word will quickly spread that you're trying to poach meteorites and you can expect many other landowners to turn you immediately away when you ask to hunt their property. Next time we're going to talk about how to hunt for and spot meteorites. So like and subscribe if you haven't yet and remember earthlings, anyone can find meteorites, especially you.